This conference will now be recorded. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Ann Early's Weekly Weather. We're a little late today. It's been kind of a wild week, um, but I did want to get this out because the back end of the week has a bunch of stuff. So I do apologize for the delay. It's been that kind of energy. Um, if you know astrology, look at the transits in my chart. But work is uh, work is a Virgo girl's salvation. So even though it's late, I do hope you accept my apology. And off we go with the weekly weather. Um, lots going on in the sky right now that we can work with. Um, first up, when we look at the when we look at the uh, the energy, it's the weekly weather for September 17th to the 24th. Uh, which has an X of Thor forming at the end of the week, Mercury, Eris, and Pluto, as well as the North Node. Couldn't fit them all. Put, couldn't put the North Node on that line. Uh, it's a hammer of Thor, but I'm kind of thinking with those Aries planets, a little more like an X, chop, chop, chop. Uh, Mercury and Venus are in their shadow moving forward towards leaving their shadow. So we're still dealing with um the the reveals them say you know mercury saying all sorts of things talking to us encouraging us uh helping us figure out what we're trying to do and where we're going and of course venus helping us understand what love is there are lots of health aspects in the sky we also have spica the fixed star of relationships and partnerships on the south node which indicates a lot of relationships will be ending. We had Hugh Jackman announce that he and Deborah Burness were divorcing after 27 years. Um, and also there's because of the health aspects, uh, things are, a lot of health situations are changing for people and they're leaving. Um, and we also have the sun entering Libra, which is always nice because that means a new season and new energy of forward motion. And of course, with that hammer of Thor, acts of Thor with Mercury. <clears throat> we had Mars go through it and set it off. We had the sun go through it and set it off. And now we have Mercury there. And of course, next month we'll have Venus. So as the Virgo planets go in and form this, this semi quadrate aspects to Eris and Pluto and the node of fate, the north node in Aries, um, I, the reason I'm calling an axe is because Aries rule axes, not so many, it's not, not so much hammers, even though the configuration is a hammer of Thor. So off we go, busy week. As you can see, Mercury station to go direct last week. <clears throat> and now we are this week running a couple of energies. We have that lovely grand trine in the sky in Earth that perfects this week with the sun coming to trine Pluto. And also the sun setting off Neptune. Uh, Venus, of course, is in her shadow until October 6th when she leaves it and gets past 2836 Leo. So imagine her tracing these steps. She was zero Leo, went up to 28 Leo, entered her shadow on June 19th, stationed to go retrograde on the 22nd of uh, July, and then went backwards and then stationed to go direct on Labor Day, September 4th, and now goes past her end of her shadow on October 6th. And remember, she formed a finger of God uh, both on um, July 2nd, and she will form another one on the uh, the 6th, the 1st through the 6th. So a lot of energy in the heavens about faded directions around love, partnership, and relationship. And the Sun-Venus conjunction happened at 20 Leo, which starts a new eight-year relationship cycle. Mercury retrograde, similar story. He entered his shadow of zero, uh, entered Virgo on July 28th, entered his shadow on August 4th, um, stationed to go retrograde September 23rd at 21, and he went direct on September 15th last week, and now he is coming forward um, uh, on the 30th, he goes past his shadow, and then on October 4th, he goes into Libra. So Mercury loves Virgo. He is really talking a lot. He is helping us figure out things. He is encouraging us to work on stuff. So pay attention to Mercury and Venus's message. Talk to your ghosts. I've heard from a lot of people from my past. I've called a couple people from my past. that hi, I was thinking about you. Um, it's a good time to check in. People will have different memories and remembrances of things. So giving yourself permission to kind of sit in those spaces to connect with people you haven't seen in a while, to re, 
visit emotional uh, matters as well as intellectual idea matters. So first up on Sunday, we had the square of Jupiter to um, Venus. Uh, and we have a lot of planets on the world point, this, this energy, right? So the, this Jupiter's there at 15 on the world point of Taurus. Taurus, Jupiter is in Taurus at 15 on a world point. Venus, you can see over here, is in, um, let me turn on my magic little pointer here. Um, Venus is here in Leo uh, with Juno squaring, they're squaring each other. We have Vesta in zero cancer on a world point, activating things. And we have Mercury, seven and a half of the mutable on a world point, because it's at eight Virgo. So we see a lot of energy here around this um, moment in time, which is very public. There's a lot of public things going on. And again, these are announcements. These are, you know, we're learning about things that we didn't know about before. So when we watch this square, and it is an opening square of consciousness, helping us see things in a way we hadn't, and encouraging us, inspiring us even to take action. Next up, we have Vesta trining series. Now, the women asteroids change signs, um, and we have Vesta in Cancer, which is home and family. And Ceres went into Scorpio, which is the sign of nurturing and caring and taking care of other people, um, and also mothering. So there's a grand trine, there's a trine there, which is going to be worked with a little bit later in the week when Saturn forms a grand trine in water. You can see the grand trine in water. He's at Pisces, Vesta's in Cancer, Ceres is in Virgo. So for many of a, many, or Ceres is in Scorpio, rather. For many of us, this is an emotional time. You know, I just finished talking to a friend, crying with a friend who his partner is probably dying later today. And it's been a long journey. We've walked this journey. I don't know. It's probably they're both part. They're both clients. And um, you know, as an astrologer, you you uh, he would call me and he would go, "Do you see death in you do Do you see death in Charles's chart?" And I go, "Nope, no death." You know, but it looks like this, looks like this, looks like this. So this morning he texted and he said, I think death is near. And I'm like, yeah, I think death is near too. And um, and so that's the first time I had to say that. And I don't know, we've been working on, we've been, we've been, they've been clients for years. And I think this is the first time I, you know, I said, yeah, I think you're right. Um, yeah, so uh, it caused me to burst into tears, and it also encourages us to, you know, I mean, the, the journey he and Charles, Charles and Christoph have been on is been one of enormous love, and um, and then you know the one of the reasons we know we have love is because when we lose the people that we love, we have pain, and so uh, so at any rate, this grand trine in water is very emotional. And it's very um, much about going back to the mother, going home, nurturing, going back into the root source, going into the place that gives us enormous strength. We also have the sun going opposite Neptune, which of course is triggering that grand trine in water. Notice the grand trine there in water uh, between the sun and Virgo. And we had it aspect Uranus last week, and it's going to aspect Pluto this week. And it's setting off the Neptune at 26 uh, Pisces, which forms a kite. Now, what happens with kites is when the when there's a grand trine, it's a closed energy system. And sometimes they're a little difficult, like Janis Joplin had one. It was very impossible for her to get out of addiction. Because grand trines, the systems flow and they cooperate with each other and they don't, they don't really need any intervention. They like it that way. And so when we have a kite, it says, no, no, take all that flowing energy and head it in this direction. So that's the energy of heading it in this direction with Neptune flying us off into a whole new place. Um, so there's a push, there's a call. And of course, as the sun goes past its opposition to Neptune, we see something in a way we hadn't seen before. Uh, and of course, that was this morning. Um, Christoph texted me at 642 to say, I think death is near. And I just finished talking to him right right before I recorded this. So that's the Sun Neptune. We're seeing something we hadn't seen before 
but we recognize by seeing it, it's changing that story. So look in your life where 26 Virgo is. You're seeing something you hadn't seen. Grand Trine in Saturn, Ceres, and Vesta. That takes place on September 20th, uh, uh, Wednesday, around 10.30 in the morning. And it's, it's a flowing trine. It's communicative. It's expansive. It encourages us to take action and go. There is no kite with it. So it's definitely a very feeling trine, meaning emotionally feeling very, very connected. And there's a mystic rectangle meshed in the trine. So it encourages us to, mystic rectangles are moments of fate, moments of knowing, moments of observation and recognition. And of course, brand trines in water, lots of flow, lots of feelings, lots of emotions, that's Wednesday. There's also the other grand trine in Earth that's still up there. And that one does have a kite that shoots out the energy into the Neptune planets. So there's two grand trines in Earth, that Earth and water, which make mud, which also make very fertile emotional spaces, and that also really encourage us. And that's going to be Wednesday. Uh, we also have Mercury entering into a th hammer of Thor on Wednesday that he will be in for a few days, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So he has a quincunx to uh, the North Node in Aries, as well as Eris, the goddess of discord. And then he has a quin, no, not a quincunx, a sesquiquadrate. And then he has another one to Pluto. Now we've had a few of these. We had the sun go through it. We had Mars go through it. And now we're having Mercury go through it. So it can be a repeat or a hearing from those earlier stories, good, bad, or indifferent, or it can be a new story. <laughs> and we don't know yet, but we do know the hammer starts Wednesday and runs through Saturday. So just be kind of aware of that energy of wanting to, you know, smite somebody or someone wants to smite you. They're in the mood to chop your head off, you know, hopefully not in a physical manner, but emotionally because Mercury's words. Uh, this is also one of those moments because Spick is on the south node of relationships, you know, where they say, you know, relationships take a lifetime to build, but you can end them in a moment with those words. And I, I, you know, as an astrologer, I hear many stories of relationships ending and, you know, how cruel we can be to each other in those endings. So I encourage you with this one because Mercury is really... He's really in the mood to say something. You maybe want to think twice. Uh, I know I have written, you know, not so much now because I try and figure out what the hell's going on. But back in the, when I was younger, when I would end a relationship, I would usually write a letter, you know. And I actually have a friend who is known for her letter writing when she ended a relationship. She would tell you exactly what was wrong. And, um, and she was in the process of having a power struggle with uh, someone who really betrayed her very badly. And that person said, well, I haven't gotten a letter yet. And uh, I'm like, yeah, I don't, I don't know that you're getting a letter on this one. <laughs> but OK. And so Mercury does have that. I encourage you to write the letter, but don't send it um, or process it, you know, just process. And then the other part is because Saturn is in Pisces in that grand trine, we can feel very needy or very unloved, right? So watch if you're reacting out of not feeling loved. That's your issue or feeling abandoned or feeling orphaned. The other person is doing their thing, whatever it is. And it may drive you crazy and it may, but it's also their thing. And you know, it's that song, it's your thing, do what you wanna do. I can't tell you who to sock it to. So you wanna just be this is a nasty little thing. And it's understanding that people have this desire to go chop, chop. And, you know, frankly, if it's none of your business, it's none of your business. Mind your own. But also that mind your own business, MYOB, I always love that uh, thing. But the other part of it is people have to do their journey in their way. And this is one of those, uh, this is one of those, Mercury and a hammer of Thor, an axe of Thor that says, I got to do it my way. And you may feel very justified in that, and that's totally fine. Not doubting your justification. I'm just asking you as you do it, be conscious, because this is one of those times when words can really chop off a relationship. And if you want to do that, more power to you. 
if you don't want to do that, be conscious that that's the energy in the sky where people say things and you go, wow, that's what they said. Believe them when they say it. This is a, this is a hammer. Believe it when they say it. They're telling you their truth and they're telling you what's going on. And if you find out through inadvertent means, like they carbon, you know, remember Mercury is still in his shadow, right? So this is that time when you get a text from someone, they intended it for Bob and they were complaining about you and then they send it to you. And you go, oh, that's how you really feel, huh? Again, you know, you've gotten the information Mercury needed you to have. Take the information, be grateful for it. Say, thank you, Mercury. Dodged a bullet on that one, saw it clearly, because remember, the sun's off Neptune. You're being asked to look at it clearly. And so that's the underlying energy. Like I said, I didn't want to miss this weekly weather because this hammer is a big deal. Uh, then on Thursday, we have the sun trining Pluto, activating that grand trine in Earth again, stimulating that kite to fly again. And now the sun is going to leave that grand trine that he's been working in for a few weeks because um, we, we do the 10 degree approach and then we do the actual last week he, he trined Uranus, this week he trines Pluto. So for the next 10 days, as he kind of, it kind of think of that trine as reverberating, ming, 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 sending out information, sending out ideas ideas into space, activating you. We also have Mars in the sesquiquadrate with Saturn. Now Mars is in Libra, a sign he does not care for. The sesquiquadrate's on Friday in the middle of that hammer of Thor. Um, Saturn is in Pisces. Saturn in Pisces can be a victim um, and it can whine and complain. And lower, every planet has higher and lower forms. Saturn's lower form is he feels sorry for himself or he feels like a martyr or feels like a victim or he feels like an orphan because Pisces is the sign of those things. Martyrs, orphans, victims, just the way astrology works, 12th house, right? Where we undermine ourselves, where we, where we can feel sorry for ourselves. So watch if you're feeling sorry for yourself that you don't act out on it because this is your journey. You're supposed to feel sorry for yourself right now. Or, you're, or the other person is feeling sorry for themselves. And that's okay, that's part of the energy. But with Mars triggering Saturn, which is in a grand trine in water, emotional already, Mars triggering it in Libra kind of kicks up the, well, what's wrong with me that that's what's happening to me? Or, you know, that's wrong with you and that's why you're doing this to me. Again. Great aspect for projection, Mars and Libra, which is meaning you, the other person gives you their stuff that you did to them, but it's actually their stuff that they're reacting to. And remember, we're in relationships to learn things. That's what the universe wants us to do, wants us to learn. And so, you know, think of yourself as an earth school. When this goes down, kind of go, all right, I can feel it. And of course, Mars is approaching the sesquiquadrate, so it's happening against the backdrop of this week up until Friday, and then it perfects. But that's also when the hammer is going, and that's also when we have the grand trine in Earth that grounds us, and we also we have all that emotional stuff flying around in that grand trine in water. You get any idea what's going to happen? <laughs> that's why I don't care if it's Wednesday, I, third, I gotta post this thing so everybody knows how to handle this stuff at the back. It's intense, it's personal, and do not take it personally to the best of your ability. Recognize it's gonna be triggering, it's gonna be emotionally um, intense, but you're gonna be okay. That's part of the energy of the sky right now. That's how we get you clear. That's how the heavens get you clear. I don't know why they do it this way, but they do. And you get all emotional and then you take action because we can talk about it and think about it and dream about it and whatever. But until we're emotional, we don't actually get our little butt out the door and do it. A lot of emotion this week, a lot of emotion towards getting stuff done. And then also a lot of emotion about you didn't do that to me. All right. You're right. I didn't. And I'm probably not going to. All right. What are you going to do about it? Leave? Yeah, I'm going to leave. OK, leave. You know, and imagine. Imagine the person is like a six-year-old telling their mother they're going to run away from home. I'm going to run away from home. All right, let me help you pack. <laughs> and then they go, well, maybe I'm not going to run away. It's, it's very emotional. So just hang in there. Trust the process. You're hatching. 
they're hatching, everybody's growing. It's a big growth spurt. Growth spurts are not easy. Remember when you were a little kid and your clothes didn't fit because you grew out of them? Or if you gained some weight and you grew out of something, you went, oh, that used to fit, but man, it's not fitting now. That's the energy. We're having a cosmic growth spurt. Uh, then the sun enters Libra, fall season begins. It's on a cardinal point. It's a seasonal ingress. Sun is now on a world point. Jupiter's still on a world point. Uh, there's a lot of energy about, aha, 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 I get it. So as the sun enters Libra, it is, of course, in the middle of the night, 2.50 in the morning. But you can get up on Saturday morning if you'd like, you know, Friday night into Saturday. And you can balance an egg because at this point, the sun is equal as it crosses the equator. It's at the equinox, equal day and night, equinox, you, you know. Um, and you, you know, with gravity, that's why eggs roll over. They don't stand up on their end, but you can actually stand an egg up on its end and it will stand there. Um, and it'll stay, you know, for a little while and then it'll just kind of slowly tip once Earth, once the sun gets past the equator. It's very cool. And I remember working in Midtown Manhattan. Uh, it was a beautiful fall day and across us there was a big plaza and there were maybe 24 eggs, all these people standing there and all these little eggs standing on their ends uh, and on the equinox. It was very cool. All right, Sun Quincunx Saturn. This is an adjusting aspect after the Mars has a quincunx, um, uh, as, after the Mars has a quincunx to, uh, we, we activate and we encourage and we expand. So the sun in the quincunx to Saturn is a Scorpio shaped psychological understanding that happens on Sunday. And of course our hammer of Thor at that point is pretty much released and let loose, so that's always good. But it also encourages us to recognize that we're working with a Sun Quincunx Saturn. We have to make an emotional adjustment to the situation at hand because that's what the energies of the heavens are asking us to do. So do not feel sorry for yourself to say, okay, I get it, heavens. I'm supposed to be working on this and I will. Uh, now, somebody wrote to me and said, hey, you know, I don't get notice of your uh, weekly weathers, your, not your weekly weathers, your new moon webinars. So I'm going to tell you now, the next new moon webinar is going to be on October 13th. We generally put it up on the website three days before, so you can sign up then. And we do send a newsletter out, but the way the world's been going lately, my world is not very organized. And we sent it out the day of, the day before. I usually post it on Facebook, I post it on Twitter, but also in your own mind, note on your calendar, the next new moon, which will be an eclipse, is October 13th. So feel free to block it out, watch for it, and the new moon itself actually happens, the eclipse actually happens on October 14th. So for somebody who wrote and said, I don't get notice in time, if you listen to the weekly weather, you just get notes. All right, so let's look at the aspects of the uh, planets. We have the sun going from uh, 24 Virgo to two Libra. As mentioned, we have the seasonal ingress and the sun this week has the opposition to uh, Neptune and also the trine to Pluto. The sun also is in, when it's in Virgo mode, it's in a hard aspect to that south node where Spica is, relationships ending, changing and shifting. Um, and then the Sun Quincunx Saturn at the end of the at the end of the week is very much intellectually processing, psychologically processing what's been going on. Mercury this week moving slowly because he's still in his retrograde shadow. He's moving from nine to thirteen. He does not have very many aspects. The aspect he has is that Hammer of Thor, the X of Thor, and that runs from the 20th through the 23rd, through Sunday the 23rd, or 20, through the 23rd, the evening of the 23rd, but give him a little time to get off of Pluto. So just kind of think of the ax swinging in that time frame from the 20th through the 20, late evening on the 23rd or 24th. And axes bring you clarity. They chop things, they're very helpful. They chop things down. Um, but then there's that Lizzie Borden took an ax, gave her father 40 wax when she saw what she was done. You know, I mean, like, eh, gave her mother 41. Eh, you know, axes aren't safe. So just be, you know, you'll probably hear about them in the news, frankly. Um, Venus this week, 
is again moving slowly because she's in her retrograde shadow. She has a square to Jupiter. She also has a trine on Sunday to Chiron, whose chart I did not include. But she's, you know, she's contemplating what's happening. And because she's at 15 of um, Leo, she's on a world point square to Jupiter on the 17th. And now she's moving forward in a way. Again, she's got a big aspect next week, but that's next week. Mars this week, 15 Libra to 18 and a half Libra. Uh, he has the Quin Con He's got a little bit of stressful energies because he's got the Quin Conks to Jupiter. He's got the Sesquic Quadrate to Saturn. He has the opposition to, to Chiron. So Mars and Libra, passive aggressive as he is, but he's answering to Venus and Leo. So he's passive aggressive on what he wants. So I've had a lot of people uh, articulating for the first time ever, I told them what I wanted. And I'm always like, if you don't tell them what they want, they can't do it. And if you tell them what that you want and then they don't do it, that's their option, your option. But if you don't tell them, you can't be mad you didn't tell them. So you may find yourself telling people, well, you know what I really want? It's like, okay, good. Because are we really wanting? Are we really acting in our heart's greatest direction, in our heart's path? We don't know. But this is the week when your Mars says, you know what I really want? Listen to Mars. See if you can give it to him. And remember, Rome wasn't built in a day. It may take you a little bit of time to get this part down, but you can definitely do it. Um, Saturn this week is basically at two Pisces. He gets the trine to Ceres and Vesta, creating that grand trine in water. He also has an intellectual adjustment that he went through when he had a, a, sesqu a quincunx rather to Pallas Athena. The other guys are all kind of, kind of quiet, uh, and that's the energy with them. And let me grab the moon calendar, which of course I rearranged my house. And I don't know where the moon is. There it is. There's my moon calendar. Yay, we found it. All right. So the moon this week um, it was in Libra on Sunday, going void with a square to Pluto. It entered Scorpio on the 18th. It was in Scorpio the 18th, the 19th, going void on the morning of the 20th at 621 a.m. with a sextile to Pluto. Then it enters Sagittarius at 1006 a.m. on Wednesday. And it, you know, so Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday morning are all flow. Enter Sag 10 a.m. on the 20th. It's in Sagittarius the 20th, the 21st, the 26th. Second, it goes void at 3.32 in the afternoon. It is the UN meeting here in New York and the International Day of Peace is Thursday. And I will tell you the traffic here in New York is a nightmare when the UN's here, but that always happens the last two weeks in September. So um, watch for speeches, big important speeches from the UN with a gathering of the nations here on at the UN. And interestingly, the UN, is built on land that used to be a slaughterhouse. Because back in the old days, because there wasn't refrigeration, they'd bring the cow to New York and kill it here and then sell the meat you know, to the restaurants and the people. So it was a slaughterhouse. Um, it was on the you know, wrong side of the tracks, technically. Third Avenue subway blocked it off. But it also was, uh, you know, I, I thought it was very interesting that they built the United Nations, whose mission is peace and to prevent slaughter, that was built on a slaughterhouse. Little known fact, um, aren't you aren't you happy that you know that? <laughs> so the moon's in Sagittarius the 20th, the 21st, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday afternoon, and the moon goes void with a square to the sun, opening square, which takes us back to um, the uh, new moon last uh, December 22nd of last year. So think back to the new moon that happened then. This is the opening quarter around that story. Then the moon goes into Capricorn at 4.20 p.m. It'll be in Capricorn Friday night, Saturday, Sunday. Goes void at 4.05 p.m. on Sunday. And then it enters Aquarius at 7.29 when Yom Kippur begins at sundown. But when it goes void, it goes void. Moon and Cap goes void with a conjunction to Pluto. And then it's in, it's in Aquarius. Friday, Monday night, Tuesday, or Sunday night, Monday, and Tuesday until um, 8.38 when it goes void with a square to Uranus. So the easy moons this week are the um, the Scorpio moon, Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday, Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday, 
the Sag wound's a little bit of a challenge because the closing aspect's a square, sensitive to criticism. And then the Capricorn moon is solid, reliable, and dependable, and pretty flowing. Not a lot of bad aspects on the weekend, but it does have a hard ending. Um, so the stressful days this week are the 21st is stressful, and it's very stressful in 19, uh, Tuesday the 19th, which is part of why I'm making sure I get you this podcast this week. Um, so that's the energy of the moons. Those are the difficult days. But the, the Mercury is causing a lot of consternation up there. All right, let's do astrology and event analysis. I'm, people seem to like this part. I'm having fun doing it. And so we'll talk about Daniello Cavalcante. Um, he was the escaped prisoner um, who was from Brazil, and he was uh, charged with killing his uh, girlfriend who had figured out, I guess, that he was wanted for murder in Brazil because he'd murdered somebody there. And then he stabbed her in front of her children who testified at the trial and sent him to jail. So this is his chart. He was born on July 3rd, 1989 at noon. Now I was a little out of the loop on this and I do a mentorship group on Tuesdays and one of the women lived in Pennsylvania and was very uncomfortable because, you know, it was this manhunt and I, you know, I've been having a lot going on so I haven't been as up on the news. And I said to her, well, I mean, really? Like this has been going on for two weeks? Where was I? And I said, well, he should get caught tonight because the moon's going into Virgo. Uh, and so at one o'clock in the morning, he did get caught. They found him, thermal imaging, right? So I said, it should be resolved. Like, hang in there. It'll be okay. We, were, we meet on Tuesdays, second Tuesday of the month. So at any rate, this is, this is his chart. He's a sun, moon, cancer. We don't have a birth time. We see the Mercury, Jupiter, and Gemini. You know, and he escaped Brazil where he's wanted for murder. And of course, he's here sentenced to murder, sentenced to life imprisonment for murder in the United States, Mercury, Jupiter. He has um, this little energy down here in Capricorn. He's a little guy. He's only five feet tall. So um, so at any rate, but the Cancer Crab, and he's the Neptune Saturn, right, opposite the sun. So he's very uh, deceptive or can be very deceptive. And then he has, you know, obviously he's known for a temper. He's killed two people. Um, and so we see the Mars Venus. It, basically when he was, as I understand it, when he was about to be found out or disrespected. So the thing I found fascinating is he's got this sun trine Pluto, right? Which makes him very adept. And he also has a really great Mercury here in Gemini conjunct Jupiter. Now Jupiter's in its detriment but it also is, um, it amplifies the Mercury, which makes him tricky and smart and observant. So what he observed in the prison was how to get out of the prison. He figured out how to scale the wall. Now these five foot, he's a five foot guy. So there he is climbing the wall and then he gets a little higher. You can see it doing a crab walk. Now he's a cancer, cancers are crabs. He did a crab walk up the prison wall through the barbed wire jumped off into the field and ran off. And so they did the head count and he was missing. The guard who didn't notice him jumping off the tower got fired, lost his job. After 19 years, we're hearing the nodal energy. So this was an escape. We had a timed escape about 8.33 in the morning, according to the security cameras. And here we see the ascendant with Mars on it. And Mars is in Libra answering to Venus and, Air, Venus and Leo. And you can see the planets here. The sun is in Virgo on a world point, seven and a half of the mutable. And um, he escaped on August 31st. And he was at large for two weeks. And you see this Jupiter over here at 15, which is 15 days. You know, if you said, well, when's he going to get caught? Well, Mars is in a uh, in a quincunx to... I'm sorry, Mars and Mars is talking to Mars is on the North Node over here. And these guys, you know, the Uranus and the North Node talk to each other. We also see in his natal chart, um, you know, stuff at 15, right? That says, okay, I'm gonna be able to run around and do things. But this is his escape chart. So if we put this again and we see the moons in Pisces here, uh, he probably watched that thing and thought, I can get up there, let me do it, and did his escape with Mars here climbing that wall. Now he's out in the world. So this is the Arabic parts for the escape. 
Uh, Neptune, I do not want to stay in this plant. I'm going to follow my passion. I got here because of my passion. Uh, and South Node on, and everybody was very passionate about it. There'll be a movie written about it because Venus is on the part of plays. Mercury's on the part of bondage and private enemies. So he was able to escape. This is where Arabic, you have a time chart. It's always good to look at it and see it. And then Jupiter on the world point on the part of discord, a lot of discord about how this went down and um, also opposite the part of death. You know, it's an escaped murderer. And, you know, I have a lot of friends in the Pennsylvania area. So once I kind of tuned into it, I'm like, oh, that it was near you. It was near you. And they were all like, oh, yeah, we were really afraid because they were sending out alerts on cell phones. You know, be be careful, be caught. And of course, my mentee in the open mentorship group, she's like, I've been very nervous because, you know, he's in our neighborhood. I'm like, oh, so what was happening was Moon was going to Moon was going to go into Virgo. And of course, he escaped on a Virgo sun, right? And now, 14 days later, the moon is coming back to the sun, right? It's going to be, you know, he's going to be caught. So he should be caught when the moon gets to repeats, right? And and this is a old horary technique, uh, you know, in terms of timing. And we see that moon there at 14, opposite the sun. Now they got sightings of him at seven where they realized he'd shaved his beard off and he'd changed his hair and done some other stuff but they actually caught him at 14 days <clears throat> so this is him with the escape chart uh we see um mercury ascendant in mars in the 12th house now it's a solar chart we don't have a time chart for him but solar charts work well you put the sun at the mid heaven it's what the public appears to see and we see up here his Venus on the Mars, like, okay, I'm out of here. And we also see the energy of, um, you know, the, the planet Mercury, of course, in its rulership, but it's retrograde, right? So Mercury then has to go forward, stop it and go direct after the 3rd of September. So at that point, they really kind of started spotting him regularly. And we also see the series here on the South Node. Um, and so obviously they, wanted to protect the children who had the woman who of who he had killed so they were very protective of those kids because he might come get them you know uh because because he's that kind of guy so then oops then we have when he got caught now what happened at one in the morning when the progress when the transiting moon went into virgo it wasn't void anymore they caught him on heat thermal cameras there's venus high in fire but the weather was bad, so they had to take the helicopter and go home. He said, we'll come back in the morning. So they kind of um, surrounded where he was because he'd broken through his perimeters a couple times. He's very tricky with that Mercury-Jupiter conjunction, right? And he's smart, clever is what we call that placement. Um, and so we knew they knew where he was and they, they kind of surrounded him. So here we see now Mercury is on a world point. It's at uh, seven and a half of, mu of the Virgo is a world point. We see the Virgo there. And Virgo, of course, rules small animals, rules dogs. And we see Mars here again on the first. Now, that was on the first when he escaped at 8.33 in the morning, two weeks earlier. But now Mars is back there again. But this time, we see the moon in Virgo. When they saw him, they found him on the heat thermal. And then they went out in the morning to catch him. And he crawled through the bushes and they sicked Yoda on him. And Yoda took him down. And there's Yoda, our dog, who's part of the story of the capture. The moon in the mid moon rules the mid heaven and the moon is right next to Mercury. So Yoda bit him on the scalp. So he had a little dog bite. But he was crawling through the bushes with his rifle, right? So he was he was escaping, but Yoda caught him. And there we see that moon. In Virgo, on a world point, how cool is that? Trining the Jupiter on a world point. And we also see Juno, we partnered. I mean, they had pictures of all the police officers involved in catching him. They got some criticism for that, but these guys were working for two weeks trying to catch the guys. So I don't mind if they take a picture. Um, I'm like, yeah, you, this is like, I was, but I've been throwing away my stuff, you know, and shredding. And so I run into old stories that I kept or memories I kept, you know, jobs hired, left, quit, uh, times I've been to court to testify, 
you know, it's your memory box. So for all of them that work so hard to catch this guy for two weeks, this is going in there. Yeah, this is, you know, back in, in 2023, I was in a manhunt for this guy that crawled out of prison like a little crab. And so here we see the sun in Virgo going back to prison and he's Venus rising. And it was everybody could rest and not feel afraid in the um, in the manhunt. And then we also see here the capture chart. So now we see Mars is back in jail. See how Mars was escaping jail in the last one? Now it's back in jail. And we also see uh, the, the Mercury here uh, on the world point. So there was a dog involved, but also that everybody could rest and not feel that the murderer was going to get them. So the midheaven here, transiting midheaven for the capture is on Chiron and Cancer. Uh, and we see Vesta here in, Gem in Gemini, back on Mercury. He's going back to his home for the next, the rest of his life, prison. And the way he escaped, you know, because was exercise time in the prison, um, that energy of that little crab crawling up the wall. <laughs> so once I tuned into this story, I'm like, oh my God, this is going to be, I'm not going to do Putin and Kim Jong-un. I just, I just can't go there, but I can do Danilo. Cavalcante getting caught by Yoda and all the other guys that were in the picture with Yoda. So go Yoda. Thank you very much for giving us our politics and in the news story for the day. Remember, you can sign up for a couple of stars where you get a daily audio feed uh, as well as a daily aspects and a song uh, and sent directly to you to your email of your choice. And on that note, we wish you a happy week of the 17th. Apologize for being a little bit late, um, but I was. And um, wishing you a good week. Hang in there. Have fun. Uh, remember, the heavens are there to guide you, and they are guiding you a lot this week. Try not to react. Take a pulse. Take a beat. Pay attention to what's going on and go, okay, I'm getting triggered by that. Uh, hammer of Thor, that hammer of the axe of Thor, or I don't have to be triggered. I can watch it, feel it, figure out how I want to work with it, and maybe make other choices. The heavens are there to guide you. Have a great week. Bye.